I'm Benjamin Franklin. I love to talk to groups today. I like to tell about the exciting things that happened at the beginning of our nation and how they relate to you. I talk about my friends, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and what you can learn from our different styles, sharing the energizing stories and techniques that are still valid today. One of my favorite stories happened at our second Continental Congress. I was on a committee. Have any of you ever been on a committee? <laughs> yes. Well, then you might understand. I was on a lot of committees, uh, but this one was special. There were five of us on this committee. We were supposed to write down the reasons we were unhappy with that king over there in England, you, you know, King George, uh, why we deserve to seek our independence, a declaration of independence. And someone had to write the document. John Adams from Massachusetts was on that committee. If you know anything about Mr. Adams, you probably realize he wanted to write the document. I said, you can't write this, Mr. Adams. He said, why not, Mr. Franklin? And I don't know if it was Roger Sherman from Connecticut or perhaps Robert Livingston from New York, who were both on the committee, but one of them said, you know what people think of you, Mr. Adams. And he did. He said, I know, they think I'm obnoxious, and they're right. I said, well, they'll never read it. He said, that may be, but you, Franklin, you cannot write it either. I said, of course I can. I'm a journalist. I've been writing all my life. I can write this document. He said, you will put a joke in there. And he was right. I probably would have. But there was a young man on that committee, tall, good-looking, red-haired fellow from Virginia, Thomas Jefferson, brilliant man, perhaps the most brilliant of the members of our Second Continental Congress. And he was a good writer, and that was important. And he was from the South. That was more important. We needed the support of the South. He was the only Southerner on the committee. But I think the most important thing of all was the fact that he was young. <laughs> he didn't know any better. So we gave him the job, and he wrote that declaration. And then we changed it. And we changed it. And we changed it and changed it and changed it and changed it. Finally, Mr. Jefferson was upset. He seemed to think it wasn't his anymore, but it couldn't be his. It had to belong to every one of us. Changes, my friends, were necessary if for no other reason than to make each one of us a part of that document so that when we pledged our lives, our fortunes, our sacred honor in signing that declaration, it was a promise to you, a promise that there would be a free and independent nation for you your children, your grandchildren, to live in. Yes, we live in an ever-changing world, but when it comes to change, we only have two choices. We are either going to embrace the change and become part of making it work, or we are going to sit by and watch it happen. I want you to accept the challenge of change. The key to a successful meeting is an atmosphere of excitement and anticipation. You want something special, something that will make them talk about you, something that will keep them coming back. Each of my entertaining, energizing, and inspiring stories illustrates techniques and secrets that can be used today and will promote a sense of pride and enthusiasm for the tasks ahead. I would love to discuss how to make your meeting the one they will talk about. And remember, please, contact me now and explore the exciting possibilities to make this your most electrifying meeting ever.